which I could be facing Seth Rollins because of what happened between Triple H and Randy Orton back in 04, but I don't see that happening anytime soon because WWE has to endorse somebody, and obviously the one they have a great deal of faith in and the one they're going to be endorsing for quite some time, at least from here on out, is going to be Seth Rollins. Now, whether or not you agree with that, uh, that's up to you. My analogy of this is that you have so much talent coming from the Shield, WWE created uh, notice that, and that's why they called up all three members of the Shield as a faction back in 2012. They've been there since November of 2012, winning tag team titles, U.S. titles. They've got WrestleMania main events under their belt. Uh, it's amazing uh, what they did for the tag team division and their singles careers definitely have taken off since breaking away from being a trio uh, known as the Shield, one of the more powerful factions to come through professional wrestling doors since the New World Order or the Four Horsemen, the Powers of Pain. Uh, definitely, I think they're very uh, impressive and they're definitely uh, deserving of the pushes they have all received as three different individuals in terms of a singles wrestler perspective. Uh, but the thing is, the one that is getting the most emphasis placed on him is Seth Rollins, and that's what I don't agree with, and I have been quoted in saying in video blogs I've thrown up on this YouTube channel uh, that Seth Rollins believes he's the future of WWE only in his own mind, and if ever came down to a match between, say, I don't know, Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar or Seth Rollins and Sting for that championship, that strap's going elsewhere, whether around the waist of Sting or rather around the waist of Brock Lesnar, it's going elsewhere because I don't think Seth Rollins can hold a candle out of someone the caliber of a talent like Brock Lesnar or the caliber of a talent like Sting because, I mean, they're legends and they have established themselves in the wrestling business. So to say they're going down to Seth Rollins, I really don't know or if Seth Rollins could hold his own uh, in a match with Brock Lesnar. I mean, look at how many times he runs away from Brock Lesnar. I mean, just before... Uh, Brock Lesnar was suspended, they were supposed to have a match between Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins, and look how fast Seth Rollins took off uh, from Brock Lesnar. So his uh, worthiness of facing Brock Lesnar is definitely questionable, and I think that other S.H.I.E.L.D. members could be in the same position facing Lesnar or facing Sting, like Dean Ambrose, either facing them or working together with them. Obviously, they feel more confident putting matches together with Dean Ambrose, assisting people like John Cena rather than going one-on-one -on -one with them. We only just recently saw a match between Cena and Ambrose, which was phenomenal, uh, for the U.S. Championship. And that right there is an exemplification of just how good uh, Ambrose is. I mean, look at the U.S. Championship match and the U.S. Championship Open that himself and Cena had. I mean, Ambrose really took Cena to the limit, uh, pushed him beyond his potential, and definitely Ambrose stood out uh, in that match with a handshake following the match to keep the fans favoring uh, Dean Ambrose. And that right there told me, you know, when uh, Dean Ambrose didn't turn on John Cena and shook his hand with a sign of respect, uh, being thrown towards someone who was carrying the torch of WWE after having a pass to him by The Rock back in 2013. That, to me, says WWE are trying to do something with Dean Ambrose and get the best years out of him uh, for years to come. That's why he's still a fan favorite while they're continuously pushing him. And I have been endorsing Dean Ambrose because I am a really big Dean Ambrose fan, and I'll continue to be a really big Dean Ambrose fan until he wins a major singles championship like the Intercontinental title, which they tried to do and give him around WrestleMania time, but that quickly I was thrown out the proverbial back door and the Intercontinental Championship was given to Daniel Bryan because they had to give something to Daniel Bryan because he was just coming back off a major injury. Unfortunately for him, he had to drop uh, the Intercontinental Championship and go away because of a second major injury in less than one year. That's going to be really heartbreaking for Daniel Bryan. I think we'll see him again at some point in time. But before that, it seemed to be revolving around Dean Ambrose because at that time, I think they were conflicted whether or not to have Daniel Bryan going up for the championship in a triple threat match uh, with Lesnar and Reigns at WrestleMania or uh, to have Daniel Bryan do something different. And they ultimately decided to have Daniel Bryan be the one to be IC champion as opposed uh, to Ambrose. Really liked how uh, Dean Ambrose was uh, obsessed with getting his name on the honorary wall in WWE headquarters, he was unable to do it. But I think one day we're going to see Dean Ambrose on the honorary wall of some of the greatest champions of all time uh, because he's definitely a character that everybody uh, seems to be getting behind and endorsing. And I really appreciate how everybody's getting behind Dean Ambrose and endorsing him the way that they have. And I can't say anything but good things about Dean Ambrose. There are very few negative things uh, that I can find to say about a Dean Ambrose character because he resembles so many wrestlers of the past, so many legends, I've got to be really proud of what Dean Ambrose is doing. I know Bret Hart definitely is proud. Uh, people of the past that we don't see all the time, Roddy Piper, Dustin Rhodes, they've all got to be really proud of everything Dean Ambrose is doing because they put me in mind of Dean Ambrose so much because of just how similar his character is to those of the past in the way of Bret Hart's Roddy Piper's, the craziness of Roddy Piper. Uh, it seems to be a combination of Roddy Piper's craziness and the craziness of uh, Brian Pillman, in my opinion. So many people come to mind when you're talking about someone like Dean Ambrose, so why not? Uh, be a fan of Dean Ambrose. If there ever was a time to be a fan of Dean Ambrose, I think now uh, is that time. It's time to get on the wheel of it, behind the wheel of endorsement. 
uh, for Dean Ambrose and start pushing him in a more probable direction because I think there's been way too much emphasis on the same person all the time. And if there's one person from the Shield that's being endorsed way too much and beyond his potential is Seth Rollins. I think they're pushing Seth Rollins way too fast because the realization of having to create stars for tomorrow and professional wrestling is slapping them in the face. They realize they have nobody with Daniel Bryan contemplating retirement and a different wrestlers not being there all the time such as Sting and Brock Lesnar. They know they have very few superstars to depend on. So I think they're rushing uh, the elevation of Seth Rollins. And you can criticize me all you want for saying they're rushing uh, the elevation of Seth Rollins, but really that's what they're doing because if they weren't rushing Seth Rollins, they would be taking their time with Seth Rollins. Ever since the Shield went their separate ways, it seems like Seth Rollins has been up Triple H's ass, in my opinion. And he's been endorsed and endorsed and endorsed by this one, by that one, by Stephanie, by Triple H, by John Cena. I mean, it's amazing, you know, what they're doing with Rollins, but it's amazing in a bad way because I think Rollins is in main events with John Cena and beating John Cena way too soon. He doesn't deserve uh, the opportunities that he's been given, and I have been quoted in saying that I hate Seth Rollins on blogtalkradio.com for various interviews I've done ever since the push of Seth Rollins first started, and I said, you know, let's get going. Uh, with Dean Ambrose, because Dean Ambrose is the guy that can really be ran with and has so much potential that goes uh, with his character. To say Dean Ambrose has no potential would be a lie, because Dean Ambrose does have a potential. It's just a matter of recognizing that potential and what can be done with Dean Ambrose's character. I mean, if you can push somebody like a Santino Morella about two or three years into his WWE career, you can do the same thing for Dean Ambrose. I mean, in no time, Santino Morella was Intercontinental Champion. In no time, Carlito was U.S. Champion. I mean, they bring in people and they push them so fast. And Seth Rollins is another example of someone who's being pushed so fast. So if you can do that with Seth Rollins, then you can obviously do it uh, with Dean Ambrose. It's just a matter of figuring out what to do with his character. And believe me when I tell you, even if you don't agree with me, Dean Ambrose has so much potential that goes with his character, and it's just a matter of recognizing that potential and doing something with it, really running with the character of Dean Ambrose, getting behind the wheel of endorsement. And I really wish and I hope that if anything is taken from this video blog this week, my brief thoughts on Dean Ambrose is that, you know, we have to get behind the wheel of endorsement and we have to start supporting Dean Ambrose being pushed because the more that we support Dean Ambrose being pushed, the more is going to be done with his character and only good things can come from Dean Ambrose's character for the next four or five years. He could easily be uh, in the main event of WrestleMania, you know, if someone like John Cena can have 25, 30 WrestleMania main events under his belt, strictly speaking, then someone like Dean Ambrose is going to have the same thing done with him. I mean, look what they did with The Miz. They put The Miz in the WrestleMania main event four or five years ago, and The Miz has been big ever since. I mean, if you do that with Mike Mizan and someone who you had very little confidence in uh, when he first came in, I know JBL loved to criticize The Miz, and I questioned JBL about his criticism towards The Miz, but he said The Miz was a very talented worker. At that point, he had earned the respect of JBL by the time I had got the chance to interview John Bradshaw Layfield. And by that point, The Miz had earned the respect of John Bradshaw Layfield, so JBL couldn't find anything negative to have to say about The Miz. He just pointed out the fact that his character didn't like The Miz on television because that's something he had to do to make the commentary a little bit more interesting because every commentator has someone they either like or they dislike. And obviously, JBL's character he didn't like was The Miz because he felt The Miz at a certain point in his life had not done anything to prove himself in professional wrestling. At that point when I spoke with JBL, The Miz had done enough to impress JBL, so he was endorsing uh, The Miz. So if you can endorse The Miz, you can easily endorse Dean Ambrose for a WrestleMania main event because, I mean, he's got the crowd, he's got the pops uh, from the crowd. The response seems to be in the right place uh, for Dean Ambrose, and everything seems to be falling into place for Dean Ambrose. He's got the craziness, he's got the attitude, so only good things can come uh, from Dean Ambrose. A matter of when, where, and how he'll become champion, I really don't know. Give me your predictions on the future of Dean Ambrose, which is the focal point of this video blog. There you see it in the headline, Dean Ambrose, Jonathan Clark discusses the future of Dean Ambrose with World Wrestling Entertainment. I want to know what your opinion is on this, so drop it for me in the comments of this video blog at Jonathan Clark 22 on our YouTube channel with 56,000 channel views, on Twitter with 40,000 tweets at Jonathan Clark 1, and a creative hashtag. Really appreciate those on Facebook. You can send me a message, post it on our wall, whatever, at HEW Entertainment, whatever floats your proverbial boat. Let me know what your opinion is on Dean Ambrose because we have to get behind uh, the proverbial wheel of endorsement for him because I really think that only good things can come for a character that has so much potential. And that's more than what I can say 
uh, for someone like King Bear. I can't tell you how much that one pisses me off. And you can also give me your opinion on everything we've tweeted out on Twitter in the way of wrestling and entertainment news coverage. Same thing goes for you on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. All the video archives we've thrown up for you, nearly 2,000 with 56,000 channel views at Jonathan Clark 22. All you have to do is subscribe throughout social media and get in on the conversation. And trust me when I tell you, if you have not subscribed, you're missing out a lot. So much going on, especially uh, in the world of entertainment with all the debacles uh, we've been caught up with in profiling for you, and especially in professional wrestling as well. Both avenues are filled with conversational topics, up to 40,000 K, 40,000 tweets on Twitter, and just as many posts on our Facebook page at HGW Entertainment, posting something every 30 minutes for you to talk about and get in on the conversation about. And by the way, you can go to our website and sign up for our form. There are 90 seconds of your time is all it will take to create an account. Once you've taken 90 seconds of your time to create a username and password, you use the username and password you've created to simply sign in and get in on the conversation and give us your feedback and your thoughts. This week on our show, talking about Dean Ambrose, give me your thoughts throughout social media, and I will see you uh, next week. Good luck, Dean, for a very profitable future, definitely making a lot of people proud. And I'm looking forward to, as we get past the halfway point of 2015, what to look forward to for the remainder of the year and heading in out of next year. 2016 seems to be very, very promising. And I've got Carly Ray Jepsen's latest. It's called I Really Like You, and I will see you next week. Like what you hear? Tell us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. <laughs>